Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Uwe Digo, and I can predict the future. The future is looking friendly. I very much love these seven letters behind me, Fiat Lux. These are the first seven letters ever printed in a book. The first seven letters of the Gutenberg Bible of 1452. Fiat Lux, let there be light. It's beautiful. The great French poet Paul Valéry once said, that the future is not what it used to be. And he was right, because the future is becoming harder and harder to predict. Things are just moving so fast. This is the Osborne. Some of you might remember this machine. It's the world's first truly portable computer, 1980. My father loved this machine. He actually used it in 1980 to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was physically impossible for the human body to run 100 meters in under 10 seconds. To do so, he entered all the physiological data of the human body into the computer, and he showed it, black on white, sorry, green on black, that it was physically impossible. That was in 1980. In May 1981, Carl Lewis ran 100 meters in under 10 seconds at low altitude at the Tokyo Olympics for the first time. And nowadays, if you can't run 100 meters in under 10 seconds, stay home. <laughs> it's become the standard. Everybody's doing it. Well, I'm not, but I mean, most, most people are doing it. The reason for this is that we, as beautiful human beings, are constantly chasing the next blue ocean, constantly trying to make things better, constantly breaking records. And this is going to change the world around us. The fact is, the future is coming. And it's looking great from the technology point of view. It's the social side that worries me. You can't stop the future. You can't rewind the past. All you can do is press play. But I think we have to be really, really careful if we want our future to stay friendly. We now know that statistically, the 150-year-old man is already born. Any of you that are born after year 2000, you'll probably be centenarians. That's a given. Every year, we are adding three months of longevity to our life. It's incredible. And each, each one of these wonderful people today is generating about 500 megs of data per day. That's incredible. Today, we have 7.5 billion people on the planet that are each generating 500 megs of data. It doesn't sound like much, 500 megs, that's a half a gig. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, if you took all the data generated by every single person on the planet and printed it in one day, and you print it on A4 size paper, single lines, font size 12, double sided, and you stacked up all these pieces of paper, you'd have enough paper to reach all the way to the sun and back four times. That's how much data is generated in one day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the biggest revolution. Because mark my words, we are sitting on the edge of a revolution. This is us. In the next 10 years, seven new technologies will arrive that will completely change the future of mankind. These technologies were science fiction a few years ago, but are now an absolute certain reality. Just as a bit of background as to why this is happening, it's this incredibly interesting fact that over the last 100 years, we have more than doubled life expectancy on the planet. All right? As I said earlier, every year we're adding three months of longevity to our life. This is going to create an incredible amount of old people. We have to be really careful if we want it to work out for all of us. So in year zero, 2,000 years ago, there were about 200 million on the planet. 200 million people. That's very little. That's like the population of, of Pakistan living on the whole planet. 2,000 years ago. And in fact, population grew, grew, grew really slowly. It took until year 1790 to reach a worldwide population of 1 billion people. Then came the Industrial Revolution of the 1840s, and it started climbing incrementally. And when I was born in 1965, yes, I know, I'm very old, 1965, there were 3.5 billion people on the planet. So in my life of 50 years, we have now more than doubled it to 7.5 billion people. Yes, there's seven and a half billion people living on our beautiful planet today. And that's crazy. This is the world's first serious computer, IBM, 1967. NASA used two of these computers to send a, moon, a man on the moon in 1969, I believe. The world's first supercomputer, 
the Cray supercomputer came out in 1974. By, Cray, by supercomputer, I'm talking about a computer with infinite power. You can basically run a country with a supercomputer. Until a few years ago, there were only a few supercomputers super in the whole world. Now, an iPhone 6 is a thousand times more powerful than a Cray supercomputer of 1974. I know you said that the iPhone 5 was a few, 1.3 times more powerful than the Apollo. iPhone 6, a thousand times more powerful than a Cray supercomputer. Now, you just imagine what this is going to do. You have 7.5 billion people that have in their hand the incredible power of a device that's a thousand times more powerful than a crazy supercomputer of 1974. Imagine what that's going to do to medical research, to the speed of development. Unfortunately, most people are now using this incredible power for Facebook or for Tinder. But I'm hoping that one of these days we're going to start putting this power to better use. We have to go back a little bit, because to really predict the future, you have to understand what happened in the past. This is the world's first known photograph of a measurement of blood pressure. 1907, Hospital of La Pitié Salpêtrière, Paris. It's barely 100 years ago. The moment is elegant and photogenic. It's not at all banal. Look, notice the fact that there's 14 doctors around the patient just to measure something as silly as blood pressure. Indeed, in 1907, the measurement of blood pressure was considered to be a highly important and clinical medical procedure. Just imagine now that barely a hundred years later, we are about to issue technology where we will inject your arteries with nanorobots that will feed off the plaque and the cholesterol, cleaning your arteries like vulgar toilets. This is now a certain reality. Nanotechnology is coming and it's going to change many aspects of modern medicine. And what about DNA? DNA is the instruction book for writing life. We have now deciphered the alphabet for DNA. So the next step is for us to start using this alphabet to write new life, to eliminate diseases before they even arrive, forever. And there's 3D printing from stem cells. That's also coming. Can you believe that in the next few years we will be releasing technology that will allow us to print complex organs from stem cells? This was science fiction a few years ago, but it's a near reality. There's a program in Israel where they're printing a liver from stem cells. I've seen a program in Russia where they're printing a heart from stem cells. Again, science fiction? I think not. It's coming. And robotics. I mean, what's happening in robotics is just simply extraordinary. We think that in the next 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years, we should be able to replace any mechanical part of your body. The only part of your body that we won't be able to replace that we cannot print is your brain, because you cannot print intelligence yet. Because even if you cannot print intelligence, we now know that everything that can be connected will be connected. And you can enhance information with data processing and artificial intelligence. Whether it's a house, a blood pressure monitor, a computer, or a car, if it can be connected, it will be connected, because connection has now entered into our mores and our expectations as end users. When you buy a computer, you don't ask, will my computer have internet? Duh, of course it will. In the next five years, anything that can be connected that isn't connected will be considered to be a medical antique. And this big data is going to allow us to, to punch through medical research, to accelerate it, to find answers to questions that we didn't even know existed a few years ago, to eradicate diseases forever. That is the future. So we now know that we have these incredible seven technologies which are coming, big data, artificial intelligence, DNA, nanotechnology, 3D printing of body parts, robotics, stem cell therapy. Can you imagine a very near future? where there'll be no more cancer, no more diseases, no more death. It is Marcel Proust who once said that the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in looking at things with new eyes. And ladies and gentlemen, if we want our world to survive, we need to start looking at things with new eyes. Because the biggest danger for the future is the belief that somebody else is going to take responsibility for it. The impact of our civilization, or our lack of civilization, on our planet is staggering. And we are making it worse every year, politically, socially. We are dividing the world into haves and have-nots. We are unfortunately only thinking about ourselves and not thinking about the greater good. 
we really need to start pushing tech for good products rather than tech for money products. Never once in the history of the world has our planet been in such bad condition. And we are making it worse every year, socially, politically. And saving the environment is going to be the biggest challenge of the 21st century. So ladies and gentlemen, if we want our world to survive, we're going to have to make some hard decisions politically, socially, and morally. Because we are not just designing the future of man, we are designing the future of humanity. As I said earlier, the future is coming. And the only thing we know for certain about the future is that it will be completely different from what we expect. So if one day any of you get a call from the future, I hope that you will rise to the challenge. It is Schopenhauer, the Austrian philosopher, who once said that intelligence will allow you to hit a target that no one else can hit. But genius, genius will allow you to hit a target that no one else can see. And ladies and gentlemen, for our world to survive, we really need to start looking for those hidden targets. We need to go beyond. Thank you very much.